Hi everyone, it's Dr. A, and in this video, we're going to discuss the events that take place at the synaptic terminal as it relates to the conduction of an action potential from one neuron to the next. As the action potential travels down the axon through either continuous conduction or saltatory conduction, it will ultimately meet the end of the axon, and we call this the synaptic terminal. So let's identify and or label the components being shown here. First, we have the neuron that's carrying the action potential. Next, we have the end component of that neuron known as the synaptic terminal. And thirdly, we have the synaptic vesicles, which are located in the synaptic terminal and contain neurotransmitters. And next, we have a space or a gap, and we generally refer to this as the synaptic cleft. And lastly, the structure shown below represents the cell in which the action potential is being delivered to, or it can represent the next neuron in which the action potential will travel to next. So first, we start with the action potential traveling down the length of the axon. And as it's doing this, keep in mind that we're continuing to have an exchange of ions along the axon. And what we're showcasing here is the arrival of the action potential to the synaptic terminal. The arrival of this action potential now stimulates calcium-gated channels within its membrane to open. And this allows for the presence of calcium to enter the synaptic terminal. Now, the arrival of this action potential also causes the synaptic vesicles within the axon terminal to bind with the end component of the terminal and to then release a specialized neurotransmitter. And after their release, the neurotransmitter is now within the synaptic cleft. The released neurotransmitters then bind to the targeted cell structure. And by doing so, the action potential is allowed to continue its transmission. And this is made possible because of a threshold stimulus being reached leading to depolarization, which opens up the sodium-gated channels and allows sodium to rush in, and also because of repolarization, which then allows potassium-gated channels to open. And so with continuous conduction, as our example here, the action potential is strong enough to continue this exchange of ions in the adjacent segment of the axon and even in the next adjacent segments of the axon, all the way up until the action potential reaches its targeted destination. Now, back in the synaptic cleft where we had the release of specialized neurotransmitters, it's important to note that some of these will be transported back into the synaptic vesicles, some will be broken down, and others will diffuse or move out of the synaptic cleft and be recycled for a later or different use. Well, thank you for watching this video. Hope it's been helpful. And if it has, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.